Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 25.4 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses how to prevent and treat embolization of plaque or thrombus. Embolization is one of the causes of acute vessel closure, and it is important to differentiate from another major cause, which is dissection. The reason is that dissection is treated with stent implantation, but when the cause of acute vessel closure or slow flow is embolization, the opposite is true. Stent implantation can actually lead to further embolization and worsening of the vessel obstruction. What can cause embolization? Thrombus, plaque, or air. Air will be discussed in a separate video. When it comes to thrombus, there are many potential causes for thrombus formation. A common one is inadequate anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy. For example, if there is an infiltration of the venous line, the operator may think that anticoagulation has been administered. However, because the vein line is not functioning, the anticoagulant does not reach the systemic circulation. Another potential cause is formation of thrombus in the sheath and then the thrombus is picked up by the catheter while it is advanced to the coronary artery. And that is why it is critical to aspirate and flush the sheaths, aspirate with one syringe and then flush with another syringe with normal saline to prevent uh, thrombus from being formed into the sheath prior to catheter implantation. Another cause of thrombus formation is suboptimal lesion treatment. For example, stent under expansion can lead to thrombus formation, hypercoagulable state, or presentation with an acute coronary syndrome, such as ST elevation or myocardial infarction. In many of those patients, if there is a large thrombus, thrombectomy is performed. Going on to plaque, the two classic examples of plaque embolization are in the setting of atherectomy and also in saphenous vein graft interventions. Saphenous vein grafts do have a friable morphology and they are more likely to embolize and that is why an embolic protection device should be used whenever feasible to prevent distal embolization in that setting. Plaque embolization can also happen in patients who have lipid-rich plaque, as we'll show in an example following. And then also it can happen if uh, plaque is inserted into the catheter doing advancement through the aorta in patients with significant aortic disease. Sometimes it is not just thrombus or plaque, but it can be a mixed picture. For example, one can have a lipid-rich plaque that embolizes, but also forms the nidus for additional thrombus formation. These are examples of plaque and thrombus aspirated from guide catheters. If uh, the guide catheter had not been prepared in a meticulous fashion, this material could have embolized into the coronary artery or in the systemic circulation, causing acute coronary obstruction or systemic embolization such as stroke. Again, the message is before advancing a catheter, it is critical to aspirate the sheath, discard the content, flush with normal saline, and then advance the catheter and also before injecting contrast into the coronary arteries, once again aspirate the catheter, ensure that there is no debris or thrombus in the catheter. This is an example of air in the line. This obviously has to be prepared before proceeding with injection. Aspirating is critical once again uh, before performing the procedure, coronary angiography and PCI. And this is those basic and simple steps that if not performed properly, can result in substantial complications. So how to treat embolization if it occurs? When it comes to thrombus, it is important to check the activated clotting time to ensure that it is therapeutic range. For example, if it is uh, uh, done in PCIs without to be three inhibitors, the ACT should be 300 seconds or more, or potentially even higher, 350 or more for retrograde CTO PCI. If a 2B3A three or cangrelor are being administered, then the ACT goal is usually 200 to 250 seconds. If thrombus is the cause of embolization, thrombectomy is often performed, and this is discussed in a separate video. And uh, 
it, when this is achieved, then the PCI proceeds with balloon angioplasty and standing. If the reason for embolization is plaque, then typically aspiration is done to remove any residual debris from the coronary artery, followed by vasodilator administration. And we'll discuss about a case that illustrates those potential treatments. This was a patient with a middle AD lesion. The lesion had lipid core plaque as shown by near-infrared spectroscopy, although this is a classic example by intravascular ultrasound of attenuated plaque. We don't have much calcification, but there is attenuation of the ultrasound signal, which is characteristic of plaque reads in lipid. The LAD was successfully stented and then postdilated, and after postdilatation, there was severe chest discomfort as well as the segment elevation. And this is the angiogram showing essentially a cessation of flow. There's some back and forth movement of the blood through the middle AD, but essentially there is no distal perfusion. This is very suggestive of distal embolization instead of dissection, which could be also a complication of stenting implantation. So what to do? Could we have prevented it? Or potentially using an embolic protection device might have helped. However, the downside is that it is hard to always predict when embolization will happen. And then using the currently available protection devices, the filter wire and the spider, can also be challenging and has some limitations. How to treat this patient? This is likely an example of plaque embolization. But as we discussed, there is often a component of thrombus formation on top of that. So the plan was to aspirate, give vasodilators, and also consider more aggressive antipedal therapy with glycoprotein 2B3 inhibitors. So indeed, we administered nicardipine as well as adenosine. And one way to give this without uh, disconnecting the connections is to give it what it's called on the stick. Uh, so the, there is an introducing needle that is inserted through the Y connector, and then the anti uh, the vasodilator is administered through the guide catheter. In this patient, aspiration thrombectomy was performed, followed by intracoronary administration of adenosine and icardibine. And another key factor when that happens is to administer the vasodilators, ideally through a microcatheter, to the area of obstruction, because if those are given through the guide, they're more likely to go to the other coronary arteries that have a regular uh, coronary flow and not into that area in which we need it the most, which is the area with the distal embolization and no reflow. And also in this patient, heptifibatite, a glycoprotein to be 3 ator was administered. The patient did well, but he did have a post-procedural myocardial infarction. So in summary, thrombus and plaque embolization are potential causes of acute vessel closure or slow flow. It is critical to prevent it by maintaining adequate anticoagulation and also giving uh, vasodilators before doing atherectomy or using an embolic protection device when doing saphenous vein graft interventions. If uh, thrombus embolization happens, one should ensure that optimal anticoagulation has been achieved and potentially give more aggressive antiplatelet treatments with intravenous antiplatelet agents. Then there is thrombectomy to remove as much of the thrombus as possible, followed by balloon angioplasty and standing if needed. If plaque embolization happens, it is critical to not place a stand because that would worsen likely the distal embolization. Instead, aspiration is performed and vasodilators are also administered. Thank you.